What's up, everybody? This is Hadram, and today I'm going to talk about something that's kind of been on my mind recently about the new Hearthstone expansion, Knights of the Frozen Throne, and it has to do with specifically the class of Hunter. Now, when this card, Deathstalker Rexar, was revealed on the stream, uh, people kind of had mixed opinions about it. It's a card that's cost too much to play in Hunter. It's a card that is used for more for control or mid-range than an aggressive deck. It kind of doesn't fit a Hunter archetype currently. Uh, it actually sparked an idea with me to create something that can utilize a Hunter archetype that's not exactly aggro but more of a mid-range. I get these ideas a lot where I can take a concept that Hearthstone has introduced and create my own spin on it. So, and I really enjoy doing things like this. I enjoy making my own cards. I enjoy creating my own content and discussing them with the people I want to share it with, which would be everybody here. So before we get into that, I want to mention that uh, my inspiration for the card actually came from uh, one of the uh, Reddit posts for Custom Hearthstone, where they have a contest where you have to submit an entry for a minion that has one attack. So, and I actually did submit this to that contest. So, but I wanted to discuss my thought process behind it and what I believe is a thought process for what you have to use to create your own Hearthstone card. So the first thing you have to do is find out which class you want. You have to pick out your artwork. Um, I can't draw. <laughs> I can't draw. So I go online and I search through the archives of Blizzard. I search through Pinterest. I go through and see what images I can use. And then I stick it on a card that I want to do for a class. We're doing Hunter. So I decided to go with this little ditty. It's a Bloodwing. It is a bat. It is a beast. Now, I start off with the art and the concept that I want to create before I do anything about cost, attack, health, put the text on it. Um, I really like making cards that bring something new to the game, but also kind of uh, make it to where it's interesting enough to where people play it, but not broken enough to where people will be upset if it actually did enter the game. So what I wanted to do is the stats that I put in for it based on its cost would be something that's playable but not destructive to the form of the game currently. So what I did was I created this little ditty here and I gave it a 1-3 stat line for 1 mana. So what this kind of does is it introduces a new form of Beast 2 um, Hunter, where it's used more for a board presence rather than board initiative. Um, I say initiative. I mean, it's less on the aggro side, more on the board presence and control kind of mid-range style of Hunter uh, without being too destructive. Now, by itself, it's really plain. Um, of course, I didn't put any text on this version of the card, um, but I did in the final version that I posted online is uh, because I wanted to discuss this concept first. A one mana one three, you've seen classes with this, you've seen Northshire Cleric, you've seen Mana Worm, you've seen Voidwalker, and you've actually seen a great deal of play of those cards in those types of decks because their stat line is fairly good, and you see a lot of one cost cards being played in more aggressive decks because, well, it's one cost, you have one mana one threes, they're usually pretty powerful, and they're usually going to be played in those types of decks. I decided to go with something a little bit different. Instead of making an aggressive effect like um, dealing damage to your opponent, I decided to go with a interesting little mechanic that was int introduced into the new expansion called Lifesteal. And what I decided to do was I tagged it onto the card and created a new minion that hunters can use not only for board control but also for some health gain. And I also added a little bit of other twists to it. So the final version of this card that I created is Bloodwing, a 1-mana one 1-3 one stealth lifesteal. It's very simple. It's a 1-mana one 1-3 one beast that hunters are obviously going to use if they're playing any kind of board control game or if they're playing an aggressive game. The stats of the card compared to the text. 
Now, stealth and lifesteal kind of give away a certain uh, character to the card that stealth kind of prevents the card from being removed easily, and lifesteal kind of tells you that the card is going to be used later on to gain a little bit of an advantage as far as your health pool is concerned. A 1-3 stat line is very good for a 1-drop to have. It's a beast, so it's obviously going to have some very powerful synergy with Hunter, especially if they have cards like Crack Lake Razor Maw. Um, it can synergize with Kill Command, activate it, and it can also synergize with Houndmaster. The one thing that I want to keep in mind about this card is that when it's played, it does not have an immediate effect, which means that it's a little bit slower than Hunters would like for a beast to have. So having a slow beast that is evenly statted for a very cheap cost is very necessary for hunters to have because the typical mid-range style of hunter would be all about pressuring your opponent, trying to put up a board presence that's hard to remove, while at the same time dealing damage through their hero power and other spells in their hand or weapons to pressure your opponent to force them to play the hunter's game. The hunter would set the pace for the entire game, and your opponent, if they weren't able to keep up, they that's how the hunter wins the game. So this card does enough of that to be threatening when it's played, but not enough in the late game to be any more than just a little nuisance. Now, the real trick to this card comes to how you can synergize with it. Uh, like I said, it's not a very aggressive card, but it is a very good play on turn one, even if your opponent has no minions, because, as I said, of the synergies that exist. Um, other than that, a one mana one three is just kind of not good enough. There are synergies, even with cards like Direwolf Alpha, that exist to make the card stronger. Now, this is my creation. It doesn't have anything to do with anything else other than the artwork that I have for it, the name that I gave it, the tags, the program that I used to create the card. This is my own creation, um, and it is July 11th, 2017, <laughs> so if something happens that amends this card in any way, this is the original form, uh, number one, of when I created this card. So the thing that I wanted to discuss the most was how do you determine what kind of card to make? How do you determine the stats? How do you determine the text? How do you determine the class, rarity, any of all that kind of stuff? And there's a few things that I think that we need to remember when it comes to creating something like this. So the some points that I think that we need to keep in mind, and uh, the most important point, of course, is card quality. You want to try to make a card that is balanced enough for its stats and effect and the class that it's made in. Uh, for example, if you use a one-mana beast in Hunter, uh, not all one-mana beasts are played in Hunter. You have some that are used here and there for different purposes, but a lot of the one-mana beasts aren't even used in Hunter. Some of them have synergies with other cards. Some of them push a different kind of strategy for a win condition. Uh, so this will not necessarily find itself in every Hunter deck, but it does have a home in specific archetypes, and a, if the player decides to go a specific direction with their deck. And you really want to kind of make a card that's balanced both for that as well as keeping the cost and stats in mind. A 1-mana one 1-3, one like I said, is fairly above average, but not really unheard of as far as a card quality is concerned. Yes, it does have its very powerful synergies, but other than a very powerful synergies, this is not really a card that can win by itself. So it doesn't necessarily make that push for Hunter to suddenly be very good. It still requires a little bit of work to deal with before it can see that kind of aggressive play. Uh, the second thing I want people to keep in mind when they create a new card is its creativity. How do you bring something new into a game that's already been around for years and years to come? You want to introduce something that will push people to try to play it, to try to use it, 
you don't want something that everybody's already had one time. You really don't want to try to do anything that pushes power creep in any way. You kind of want to have something that people want to play, that people want to use, and that would appeal to the crowd. Um, Bloodwing is cool. It's a bat. It sucks blood. <laughs> As you can see from the artwork, I tried to come up with something that would emphasize the fact that it is a beast, but I also wanted to try to emphasize something that it is kind of like a vampire-y kind of theme with the card. So hence why you see the final version with that artwork. And it really kind of appeals to a character uh, without really being much of a joke. So it has that creative aspect in mind. It's like, oh, well, you also have the card text. Stealth and Lifesteal is kind of a unique balance in cards. You don't actually see that. None of the cards that they have revealed so far for the expansion have this kind of synergy. The only Hunter card that was revealed was the Hero Power, or the new Hero with the new Hero Power. So this card has no precedent as far as its text and stat line. So I thought that I would jump the gun a little bit and put the idea out there. Stealth and Lifesteal does kind of have some weird little synergies that actually kind of work because you can play it. Pretty much guarantees that it's going to get some kind of value because it has stealth. And the Lifesteal mechanic kind of guarantees the fact that if it's used, it has another benefit besides the surprise factor for your opponent. So the third point that I want to point that I wanted to say, and this is also probably the hidden agenda for a lot of the cards that that are created through Hearthstone, and that is a community. You want the card to be received by the community. You don't want it to be an outlier. You don't want it to be a pack filler. You don't make cards so that people will ignore them. You don't make cards just to be one of those cards that people say, oh, well, I didn't get lucky because I didn't get this legendary card. Um, of course, comparing to legendary is a little bit unfair since they do have the extra shiny attached to them plus the extra effect. But you don't want it to just be an outlier. You want it to have a purpose. You want it to have the use and you want it to be received very well by the community. If not for the flavor or the use, then just for the fact that it has some place to be used in any kind of deck that you want. Uh, I feel that this card works the way it is written. It obviously might have to go through a couple of rounds of testing for balance. The mana cost could go up, the stats could go down if it's too powerful. If it's not powerful enough, you can transform it, uh, make it a little bit more evenly statted. Maybe if it's a two mana, two, three, it might be good to have instead of a one mana one three. Um, it prevents it from being a faster play at that point. Um, but again, balance is going to be a different aspect that will cover up in card quality, but it also kind of covers up community reception. So this is my idea for what I believe a Hearthstone card should do, and this is what goes through my mind whenever I try to make them. So let me know what you think. Feel free to comment, post, subscribe, and subscribe to my videos. I'll be making more of these in the future as far as what I think about card design and some ideas that I have for the game. So please let me know what you think, and you have a good day. I'll see you next time.